Good morning and welcome to Namaste Today, an exhilarating way to begin your day. I'm your heartfelt host and the sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. This audio broadcast is for Wednesday, May 17th, 2017. Welcome back, friends. Namaste. After a quiet and peaceful day of pondering your decisions and triple commitments yesterday, today's forecast is on your mark, get ready, go. In today's Zodiac weather, I'll talk about the planets and how things are shifting. And later, in your tea time, since the North Node has returned to Leo, I thought it was time to talk about the Royal Brat. But first, let's take a look at today's moods and your Zodiac weather. This Zodiac weather is for Wednesday, May 17, 2017. And my global forecast for Planet Gaia is sunny and shifty today. It's time to move forward with your manifestations. And the moon in Aquarius creates a grand trine in intellect. Let's take a look at the planets. Well, we are in that time of year where it's a two-part day. And today, I argue, it'll feel like on your mark, get set, and go. We begin with step 26 Taurus. That means as you wake up today on planet Earth, you will feel a resonance of a preliminary decision. Now, I say preliminary because I don't believe we can see around this blind corner. So this is the first decision that we can make, and I argue you should make. Go forward and decide where you can. But we're in I manifest consciousness, so the primary decision that you're making is to manifest forward. So this morning, you'll be feeling that sense and urgency that it's time to get ready and get set. Then later, we move to step 27, and that is the go. You will feel energy suddenly take off and go forward. You'll likely find it's because you are so committed into your heart with this particular position, you can now feel like everything can flow and move forward. And the universe says, yes, you should actually put your manifestation into action today if the opportunity knocks. But you'll also have tomorrow morning on Thursday as well. So look for your grand opportunity. Now, speaking of grand, that's exactly how your mind and intellect will feel today. Grand. We have a temporary grand trine in air. It's triggered by the moon in Aquarius, which allows our, ourselves to detach from our heavy drama of our emotions and begin to feel and sense the big picture. As you feel and sense that big picture, the grand trine forms with the planet Mars and Jupiter retrograde in Libra. So as the moon trines into Mars, this is the go in get ready, set, go. Mars is the part of us that pushes forward. And so once we feel, we understand the big picture, you will feel it's time to go. Go forward, go forward with the ideas, go forward with your decisions, and go forward with your thinking and planning. Now, the third part of that trine is Jupiter, which is retrograde in Libra at step 14. And this, frankly, is the new deal. Since Jupiter has been retrograding, everyone has been analyzing what's fair to me. What is my equal? How do I want to be in relationships? And if you're an artist, what should I create? So what becomes grand today is your feelings of uh, the big picture, what to do next, and also what is fair at the end of the day. What is it that you deserve? What is the level you deserve to be playing on? Or in my old analogy of the tennis game, what game are you supposed to be playing anyways? Now, what a grand trinity air actually does is unite these three points so you really have the ability to kind of think in a quantum level. You think in four dimensions or more. And so today, once you are standing on that decision of what you want, what you want to manifest, you're going to find you're going to be able to quantumly compute all the next steps necessary, make the conversations. Basically, all the pieces will come together into a solidified kind of oneness inside of you and a harmony inside of you. And this is good because I know a lot of people have felt unstable. They haven't been no, quite sure where things are going or growing. Of course, I've been saying good things are around the corner. Well, I think today you'll begin to feel that. I said this week was harvesting our blooms, and this is the beginning of that harvesting, a realization of what's valuable to you and what you want to bring to a further fruition. 
Now, although the sun is at step 26 and 27 today, Mercury, which is our mind, is at step 1 Taurus. What that means is, yes, you will see the big picture. Yes, you will see where you want to go. But the details from step 1 to 26, you haven't thought through yet. So don't expect to have all of the details and all the steps uh, illuminated suddenly because you made a commitment. Unfortunately, because we're going into uncharted storytelling here with our own personal stories, you're going to have to go think it as you go along. <laughs> okay, We're going to make the commitment, and eventually Mercury will catch up to the sun. But right now, there's a lot of thinking to do now that we know what our goal is. When it comes to that decision of that inner character, I mentioned this yesterday. It was one of the three of the triple commitments. One of the commitments is to this new version of you. And today, this is really your first day at preschool when it comes to this new version of you. I want to emphasize that if you want to get the best out of yourself right now, this is not a time to be judgmental or harsh or anything. You are a brand new beginner at this new version of you. You need time and space, step zero. You need non-judgment, okay, step seven, if you want to know. And you need uh, to be patient and loving with yourself. So today might feel like a new day. You may feel a little out on a limb, so to speak and you might feel a little exposed. All of those things are likely the birth of the new of the new you that you have been spending, frankly, the entire year focusing on and figuring out which direction to go. So it's an exciting time, but we are kindergartners. We are beginners here. Let's treat ourselves with that kind of love and self-compassion. Now, that said, I think it's time for us to steep some tea. I want to talk about the North Node in Leo. So go steep yourself some tea, and let's have our daily tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is the royal brat. Now, I'm bringing up this topic because the North Node has moved into Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun, and Leo is, frankly, our heart, our pure, beautiful, childlike heart. It is the inner child in all of us. I believe we are all born with a perfect inner child, Leo, but I also believe we have what we call karma. And so the childhood that we were born to and the experiences that happened to us until 30 replay this karma. We do kind of like past life reenactments, if you will. And along the way, our heart gets hurt. We all get hurt. And this is a reminder of the deep hurt that goes into our heart and our soul's multi-lifetime journey. Now, the heart is ruled by the sun. And if you know anything about the sun, you know it has these dark spots. They call them sunspots, where the light is literally blocked by this black spot. And there's a lot of research around these dark spots. But I kind of look at these dark spots as a symbolism for how our heart actually works as well. We all want to shine bright and be happy all the time. But we do have these dark spots that still float around and block our light. In my 11 Steps to Serious Joy series, I talked about these archetypes that each of the signs really play inside of our soul. And with Leo, the archetype is the king or the queen, or our inner child, you could say the inner prince or the princess. And each of these archetypes basically has a positive and negative expression of itself. And I talked about this with other uh, characters. For instance, our inner director can become the inner dictator if we don't treat our direction energy correctly and base it on the heart, right? Our knight in shining armor, which is our ego, can become the dumbass very quickly if it's not led by the heart. And when it comes to our inner king or inner queen, if we don't treat our heart correctly, then we can find our royal brat. We all have this royal brat inside of us, which basically comes from the spots on our sun. All the dark spots add up to this royal brat. And this royal brat has, of course, negative behavior that comes out inside of us, particularly when the universe is pushing North Node for us to come into our heart. We're all being called into our hearts now, and now that the North Node has reached step 28, it's going to start to get exciting. That means we're going to get into the depths of our heart, but before we can get into the depths of our heart, we must face our sunspots. We must deal with our royal brat. 
you're going to find that as the universe pushes you closer and closer to your heart, more and more of your royal brat wants to speak up or act out. And just so you know, there's a lot of common little behavior trends that come with the royal brat. If you are experiencing jealousy, if you are experiencing envy, if you are throwing temper tantrums inside of yourself, if you're being a drama queen or a drama king, if you are being a party pooper, these are all conditions of the inner royal brat. The weird thing about the inner royal brat is that it comes from the perspective that it's the world's fault that it's hurting. That's part of the immaturity of our inner child. Our inner child thinks it's the world's fault. And this pushes us into a false belief, basically, this idea that you can have it both ways. The royal brat wants to create their own reality and have everything they want, but the also the royal brat at the same time thinks that the world is letting them down. And frankly, you can't have it both ways, inner child, <laughs> okay? Either you believe you create your reality or you believe you are a victim to the world. Which is it? The truth is, is that the royal brat are the heart are the hurting parts of your own inner child. This part of your inner child is still hurting over certain situations. And a lot of times what we humans do is we have this idea that something outside of our heart will help our heart. And that's not true. The truth is only the heart can repair the heart. Nothing or nobody or no lottery ticket or anything you think outside of yourself is going to ever repair that royal brat's attitude. That royal brat is looking for a commitment from you, a commitment that says you will stand up and make sure that your heart does not get hurt again. That's the first thing, that you're going to stand up and be an adult to your inner child, that you're going to raise your inner child, and you're going to give it the childhood you wish you had. The royal brat will never be happy until there's some sort of commitment from yourself to yourself, because you know how it is. If we get a commitment from someone else, we feel better, right? Well, you'll be surprised to find that when you feel a commitment from yourself, you also feel better, and that your soul was seeking a commitment from yourself. So the first thing is you need to have a commitment to the royal brat that you're going to spoil it like, it like an only child, which is exactly what it is to you, your only child. Once you have that commitment in place, it's now time to pursue what your heart wants, and you're going to find that as soon as you are committed to healing your royal brat, your royal brat acts out even more, okay? <laughs> and you become more of a royal brat uh, when you say to yourself, you're going to heal your royal brat. And what this is, is that your soul is literally resisting the change, I remember when I went through a really profound inner child transit. It was in 2010. For those who are into astrology, I had Pluto in my fifth house, and it was now at the end of my fifth house. So it was time to get to the core of my heart. And Saturn was on my Pluto, which was saying it's time to draw the important boundaries. And that's the thing, too, is the important boundary at the time for me when I was coming into my heart was to look out for my own heart. That's when I first realized I have to look out for my own heart. I had just gone through two romantic relationships where I was taking care of the other person all the time and nearly running myself into the ground. And I finally realized I got to take care of my own heart here. As soon as I made this declaration to take care of my inner heart, my inner brat came out. Okay. Like suddenly I was just wanting to make fun of people and I was wanting to poo poo things. And every time something positive happened, I had this kind of shitty comment inside myself. And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm being a real brat here. And as I meditated on it, I realized, oh, my inner child is hurting. It's mad at me basically because I have been ignoring it for so many years for these other people. It's pissed off. So I made a commitment to myself at that time because I had the wisdom. It's weird. I always intuitively have the wisdom, but I'm still I'm a human being that has to go through the steps myself. And I made a commitment. That's it. I'm going to treat the royal brat like gold. A lot of the stuff I'm telling you today, I realized at this time, I'm going to help be there for him. I adopted a new voice and I kind of baby talked myself, even though it looked absolutely stupid. And I would rub my chest because I found my, my chest hurt a lot. So if I rubbed it with my left hand and gave it some love, my inner child felt a lot better. But I also remember when I would try to, you know, go on what I called play dates. I made myself go on play dates. And that would be like, I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to, you know, ride 
ride a bike. I'm going to, you know, go rollerblade or something like that, something that's fun. And I remember distinctly driving to the beach and the whole time having a total temper tantrum meltdown. So angry that I was making myself go to the beach. This is so stupid. Why am I doing this? This is blah, blah, blah. My inner brat was like totally resisting the attention that I wanted to give him. Uh, And I knew logically, my mind knew that this is what was happening is that the brat was coming out. Out. But at the same time, I kept, you know, I almost turned around like 20 times. And I was just like, no, we are going to, and this is really the magic sauce here, we are going to respond differently to the brat, okay? And the first response is, you know, you can do one of two things when the brat comes out. You can either feed that dark spot on the sun and get into the darkness and think about the darkness and let that dark spot spread, 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 or you can feed it more light, which is actually love, Okay, so when the brat comes up, which I think is going to happen a lot now. So as we're moving with the North Node in Leo and we're moving forward these manifestations, you're going to find that any of the sunspots on your heart will come up. And a lot of people do project. You know, you'll see a lot of people get mean to other people, especially people who are childlike and very sweet and innocent. This is a time where the brats really want to pick on the happy people. So for people, for so everyone really needs to protect themselves and focus on their inner self. But as these kind of sunspots come up, it's time to respond differently to your heart. Instead of going with the brat side, be loving. Give yourself an ice cream cone. And that's what I started to do. I'm like, okay, well, what will make you happy, honey? What would you like to do? You want to go buy a steak? Do you want dad to go kill a bunch of people on the beach? You know what I mean? Like, I would make jokes with myself, like, you want to get him, you know, want to kill everybody? We can do that. You know, like, and what my heart wanted was that attention. And to start recirculating basically the love that I'd always given away back into myself. So the key here is as the brat comes out, you love yourself more. Now remember, what you be is what comes. So what I started to find is the more and more I would be more loving to myself, be more considerate, be more thoughtful, give more love to myself in these spots, the more awesome opportunities started to come. So you end up changing your heart or your son's spots, so to speak. You change the spots and you start law of attracting greater and greater things. You are the creator of your reality. If you follow this show, I'm telling you this is, I think, how it goes, (laughs) okay? I don't think we are a victim to the world. I think we are plugged into reality. I think the battery is is our heart. I think the other states of awareness carry out those commands. But if you're coming from a heart that is hurt and the inner brat is out all the time hurting, you're going to law of attract more of those situations. And with the North Node in Leo, you will definitely attract more of those situations. So we often get caught in certain love stories. Like I mentioned, I've been in two relationships where I've given it away. And those love stories that we get caught in are all based on how well we have loved ourselves or not. With the North Node in Leo, you now have the opportunity to love yourself. Everyone on the planet has the same guidance from the universe. So if you want to go around helping people on the playground, forget it. God Universe is saying everyone needs to look up to the sun on their own and receive the light now. All right, And if you do this now, you're going to find remarkable healing. And you're going to find, particularly with all this energy going forward, that you begin to draw and law of attract similar situations that echo the way you love your inner brat. All right, my friend, I hope you have a fabulous and wonderful and magical self-loving day. While you're out there getting ready, getting set, and moving forward with your manifestations, remember that I love you and live, love, be. Live, love, be.